Hi folks, I'm Jose. I'm Nicole. <laughs> and we're Heavenly Acres Farm. We had a pretty awesome weekend last weekend and this video is overdue. Mm -hmm. yes. um, <laughs> but we had a, quite an experience um, butchering some pigs last week or last weekend. Mm -hmm. So we heard about this through friends of ours um, and it was shared on a local Facebook homesteading group. Um, but it was basically a family, three families of the same family, yeah. right? Three or four families of the same family that get together and they raise pigs every year and then they get together and harvest and process all the pigs together. And they opened it up to the community for anyone to come out that wanted to learn and participate and help. Um, which was really cool. So we got to meet all of them and we went both days and got to see the whole experience from start to finish. Yeah, and the first day we actually, you know, we got there, we got the directions um, from Brandon Williams was the guy that, uh, you know, we found out from and our friends Grace and Sanga told us about it. Um, so we reached out to them to see if we can be part of it. And it was a two day operation. Yeah. Um, the first day, we showed up early in the morning. I think it started at seven o'clock and we were, we were there at seven o'clock mm -hmm. and the families were holding this at their farm. Yeah. Right. Um, we got there and they were already kind of hard at work. Yeah, so they already had one pig going. They were processing four of their pigs and then Brandon had actually brought two of his pigs that he um, acquired free of charge and raised out. They were actually pot belly pigs, which was interesting. Um, so those were processed too. So a total of six pigs were dispatched, gutted, and then halved, well, halved and quartered from there, halved and third, had to cut into thirds from there on the first day. So it was a full day. And when we got there, like Jose said, one pig was already being yeah. scalded in a really cool scalder setup that you'll see in the clip. Yeah. So the scald, you know, they had this big rectangular uh, scalder that, that, they built. that they built and they could heat up um, very easily. Mm -hmm. And the whole pig just fit in there sideways. And they just rolled around the pig and then pulled it out with chains, mm -hmm. uh, which you'll see in the video. Yeah, onto, it's like they pull it out onto a table that's right there, like a great ta a table with grates. Um, and that's where, you know, you would do the, the scraping because yeah. they were keeping skin on. Um, so that's where that process would happen. And that's, we got there about that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, soon as, as soon as we got there, Jason, um, you know, kind of reached out to me and said, come on, jump on in. I was like, <laughs> okay, sure. Why not? You know, let's, let's, let's take advantage of this experience. And, uh, it, we started kind of, um, scraping, what do you call that? Yeah. We started scraping, scraping. the, the, yeah. the hair off the pig. Uh, to get it ready to start getting um, gutted and uh, you know hung and gutted so we can start the butchering process yeah i was a bit more timid than jose i never want when it's somebody else's animal and i've never done it before i never want to like do something wrong i'm more timid in that but he just jumped right in and then eventually i did get in there and try it out i did not like the the like circle scraper mm -hmm. so much i think the knife works a lot better um, but again, I was a little nervous because yeah. I didn't want to rip the, you know, the skin since they wanted to leave the skin on and intact. Yeah. Um, but that was, it was nice to get to try that. Um, that's probably like the most laborious part of the first day. Yeah, it's the least fun ex um, part of uh, butchering the pig. Yeah. Um, some people skin them. Um, I like skin. So I think, you know, if we ever do this, which we plan to do this, um, mm -hmm. I'd rather, you know, go ahead and do the scalding and scraping of the hair. Yeah. Um, and you know, being YouTubers, we, we rely on YouTube for a lot of knowledge and we see a lot of other YouTubers using the scraper. Yeah. And I think the knife worked pretty easily. Mm -hmm. And you see in the video, there is uh, actually like four or five, I think even six people um, scraping at one, time, it, at yeah. one time scraping the pig. So it, it was a team effort trying to get that going. And it went fairly quickly with all those people. It did. And then from there, we, the pigs were hung and... Wait. Yeah, hung and weighed. Um, they rigged up this really awesome gambrel system. Um, they previously would use the tractor, but then some of the family members got together and brainstormed and figured out this 
pole pulley gambrel system, which was really handy um, so that the tractor could be utilized. While that pig got hung, they would dispatch another pig, bring it over with the tractor. So it was nice because it kept the flow yeah. going, um, kept the process moving. Yeah, with that said, you can definitely tell they had, you know, some learning curves that they had applied to their, their whole system, mm -hmm. which is what's great to see and awesome to experience because we can, you know, we could apply that to, to our process and see when it comes time to and hopefully yeah. retain some of this knowledge so we can do that for us. Yeah, because they've done this for a couple years now together as a family, so they've developed their systems over time. So we're getting to see it after they've worked out some of the kinks, which was really great. Um, so then from there, once the pig was hung, then Lindsay, one of the family members, she would come in and she was basically in charge of the like gutting and eviscerating station. And um, she said a couple of times, she's like, we only do this once a year. So it takes me a little bit to like get back on the horse and, and figure out my groove, which I totally get from doing chicken processing. Mm -hmm. It's like every time you got to kind of like relearn and get back into it. Yeah. So um, what you'll see is you know, the first part is cutting around the anus and really getting that waste tract, both the urinary tract and the, the fecal tract tied off or out of the way so that when you're getting into the main cavity of the pig, none of that is, is getting in there and tainting it. Um, some people like uh, Lindsay, she uses a string method where once she gets the anus detached, she'll tie it off so that nothing can come back out. Um, and then she'll continue down to get that tract out along with the urinary tract and get that separated from the pig. Um, some people like Frank who came later and is a butcher and um, what, was a USDA butcher. Yeah, was a USDA butcher. He didn't need to tie off the anus, um, but I think the tying method is good just for, for newbies to oh, make yeah. sure that we're not getting anything, yeah, any kind of backflow. Frank was pretty great. He came in like a ninja. Yeah, Frank, Frank came in and was just like slaying it. Yeah. <laughs> but Lindsay did a great job. She let us like stand and watch and um, you know, you'll see Jamie, she was there assisting and you know, we tried to jump in and hold the pig whenever possible and try and help and you know, hold knives and get things. But the first day I didn't feel like we were able to contribute a whole lot because that it's really just like dispatching, mm -hmm. scalding, scraping, and then eviscerating.
right down through here, just kind of straight in. Okay. All the way down on both sides. You okay. This junk right here, can you get it in the split? We'll get it on the split. Um, and like, especially this section right here, mm -hmm. that's the money. There's a lot of good neck meat right there on, okay. on, on the end. So what we do is we cut it into sections about crock pot size. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then like some people, you, you have to decide, okay, do you want more uh, boneless pork chops mm -hmm. or do you want your meat on the backbone? Okay. So th this is a decision you have to make right now. Right. Okay. You, Cause like I got another guy that I do this for, he wants his cut like way over in here. He likes a lot of meat on his backbone. He don't mm. care much about pork chops. Okay. I don't have pork chops. Yeah, so we're, we're pork chops. Yeah, I like my backbone. Yeah, and then it just falls out all. It's all good. Well, and then after that, you know, they would take uh, the halves, they put them on the tra on a trailer, yeah, and then they would uh, go ahead and cut those into each it's side into three, three pieces. pieces. So, you know, six pieces per pig, which was, you know, the the rump, the shoulder, and then the center part, which was the rib cage with mm -hmm. all the the pork belly in it. Um, and that was, uh, I think that was Kim doing it. Um, yeah. And he was cutting, he was cutting those up, and we were helping move these pieces back onto the flat trailer. Yeah. I so did they, carry me, so I helped. Oh yeah, we carried a lot of meat. It was pretty, you know, it was fun scene. Um, as you can see, I think I captured some of that footage there. But, uh, you know, they're pretty big pigs. I think they averaged around 300 pounds. Yeah, somewhere. Right right under 300 pounds. Um, so, it, that first day was awesome. You know, we were mostly watching. Um, and helping where we could, you know, trying to stay yeah. out of the way, help where we could. And then, like, after the whole process was done, we helped clean up get you know vehicles over to where they transported the meat to and then we got to see their um smokehouse smokehouse yes their handmade smokehouse that they did from start to finish which was which really was, it was incredible crazy crazy awesome um it's beautiful it's a work of art it is and we didn't capture that on video i was gonna say i don't know if we you got know, footage of it if we if we did you'll see this but if not you know it was it was just an awesome smokehouse to see um, I will ask Krista or Lindsay to send a picture. So hopefully there's a picture inserted here somewhere. Yeah. But uh, they hung all the meat there for, you know, after that first day was done. Um, we took off. This was from like 7 and we, I think we left like around 1 or 2. Yeah. I don't know what time we actually left. But oh, it was, a, you know, it was a pretty full day. Um, and then we went back the second day. Yep. Now the second day we don't have any any footage because I think that was a day that we were all pretty busy yes. and it was a it was it was a really really good experience that we didn't want to miss out on. Yeah, that was the day that the pigs were all completely broken down into what their final cuts were going to be. Yeah. And we arrived that day. We wanted to get there early um because Jason said he was going to be starting early, so we got there at 6. And we got to, to chat for a bit while him and Clay were in the smokehouse, kind of just starting to figure out where they were, what their plan yeah. was, their plan of attack. And then Jason took us into the shop, which was, is amazing. I mean, their facilities and their infrastructure is incredible there. Mm -hmm. Um, because they also run other businesses off of their farm. So they have a really big workshop that's, you know, heated and has radiant heat in the floor. So it was a very comfortable second day. It was amazing. Um, but you know, he just tossed us right in there and had us cutting meat from bones. So our first task as a group was to, um, we made a lot of sausage. Yeah, yeah. Was to cut meat from bones to make sausage and ground pork. 
And then while we were doing that, some of the family was also vacuum sealing um, like pork chops and things that were coming out from the smokehouse that the guys were um, getting ready in there. We had lots of different uh, vacuum sealers going. <laughs> different types of vacuum sealers and mm -hmm. everybody was learning how to operate you know, yeah. the other ones. And there was food and I mean, it was great. It was, it was another full day, I think, we left at like 2.45 because we had to meet a customer back on the farm. Yeah. But they finished with cleanup and everything around, did I say 4.30 or 5.30? Yeah, uh, around. It was, uh, we finished up around 2, we left at 2.45. Mm -hmm. We had to be here on the farm at 3.30. But we did learn that day, you know, how to cut up um, the, sh was it the shoulders? It was the shoulders and the, the legs, the hams to make sausage and also how to separate the rib cage. I actually yeah. got to cut, um, with Frank's help, got to cut a few um, pork chops out of uh, that the pieces of meat, but we learned how to do the ribs, you know, the bacon. How the, to get the skin off, yeah. what, you know, what to keep for lard, um, how you wanna cut the meat so that you have a good, like meat to fat ratio when you're grinding for your ground pork and for sausage what the process looked like to mix up spices for sausage. Yeah, he gave us a recipe for that Packaging, as well. I mean, the great. whole the whole thing start yeah. to finish. We got to see how they run it and what their systems are, which I think is like immensely helpful. Yeah. They're rendering the lard. Yep. They were prepping for uh, country hands, which they put in their smoker and how they, you know, how they set that all up to smoke. Um, they was, did uh, smoked sausage, so they showed us the bags that they used to stuff with sausage and then hang in the smokehouse, which was really cool. I mean, just invaluable information. Yeah, there was there was so much. I mean, um, when you talk about a uh, overload, uh, we were pretty mm -hmm. close, but we were trying to just you just know take it all in, take and it all help in exactly where we could, and yeah. you know we both felt good about the second day because we both stayed very busy and got to help all day which was really nice you know we didn't want to just feel like we were just standing around watching no. we wanted to make sure that we were contributing and ha made our presence worthwhile for the families yeah yeah you know they they, they took us in and uh, they were very open and welcoming and oh yeah just awesome people to be around yeah john you know? was wonderful um jason's dad he was at like the first station with me when we got there and and he made me feel so comfortable and we, you know, we chatted a lot and he showed me, you know, how to do things. And I just, it was really nice because like I said, I'm more of that like anxious, like timid person. And yeah. so I felt like he just kind of like took me under his wing and, and helped yeah. me out for the first few hours, which was really awesome. And Kim was the same. Jason yep. was the same. Yeah. You know, Clay was, was the same. He was all busy over Krista there. Krista and Lindsay the, were the wonderful and Jamie. Um, I mean, we had a great time doing all the vacuum sealing and packaging. That was a lot of fun and just getting to chat with them and, you know, learn about them and their families. It was wonderful. We, you know, we walked away with so much valuable information and new friends. Yeah. Which and if you guys are watching this, thank you so much. Yeah. You know, we really appreciated that. And we felt like, you know, we made more than friends there that, that weekend. So it was mm -hmm. great. And they sent us home with, with goodies, which was so wonderful. It was unexpected. Yes. And, yeah. You know, we got some sausage and we got some ground pork and a thing of lard. Yeah. And that was, that was incredible. That was very generous. Which we've been eating off. Yes, <laughs> we just ate our first package of the ground pork yeah. yesterday for dinner. It was very, very good. Yeah. But, I, you know, it was, it was just overall a great experience. And we, yeah. you know, hopefully we uh, we can help out again next year. Mm -hmm. um, we plan to grow out some pigs as well. And we're definitely going to keep in touch with you all if you're watching. Yes. And, uh, you know. We heard we might have some some of the family join us for our chicken processing day which is well we're it. gonna have several processing days next year that'll be a whole nother video but we'd love to have you guys join and you know we want to bring them out to the farm and and treat them out here and yeah. you know cook some of our food for them and have a good time yeah offer some of uh, our hospitality yes. as well so yeah but i think this is where we're gonna end the video but before we end the video i i, I want to send out another thank you make sure everybody is aware that we really appreciate it grace anga thank you for you know letting us know about this this uh pig processing and brandon for you know kind of putting them together mm -hmm. and sending us the information and you know jason and um krista krista uh, lindsey and clay lindsey and clay jamie jamie um they're uh 
Lindsay's daughter Paisley. Uh huh. Everybody, I mean, Kim, Kim, Frank, Frank yeah, and John, John. Yeah. Everybody was wonderful. Hopefully, we didn't miss anybody there, I, but. I think Lynn was one of the friends that was there. She yeah. she was helping with the, the vacuum sealing. I mean, everybody was great. Everybody contributed. It was just a really fun, yeah. fun day. Justin and another Jason were there oh, yeah. helping as well. Mm -hmm. Lots of hands on deck. <laughs> but thank you all. It was, it yes, was an awesome experience. It was wonderful. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know we enjoyed the experience and mm -hmm. we hope to see you next time. Yes. All right. If you don't see us before Christmas, you guys all have a very Merry Christmas. Find your plow? Yeah. Okay, I cut that bone top, you want to go?